Hello and welcome to a special look at a truly amazing steel orchestra as Massey Trinidad All Stars celebrates 85 years through the eyes of Panorama. I'm Ruskin Mark. And I am Stacey Ann Patrick, saluting a true musical and magical institution known by many as Massey Trinidad All Stars, or simply All Stars, a legend in the history of Trinidad and Tobago. The All Star story really started back in 1935 with the name Bad Behavior, then Hellyard Boys, to pay homage to the area they occupied on the banks of the East Rail River. That was later changed to Second Fiddle, then Course of Lorraine, and eventually All Stars. Then, after the Second World War, Trinidad was added to what is now known as Trinidad All Stars since 1948. The real name of Trinidad All Stars, a lot of people don't know that right next to Trinidad, when we first started, Trinidad also Philharmonic Steel Orchestra. That was the name of the band. And Trinidad come also because they have, they have second fiddle, of course, the way. How they it becomes all stars, they had a meeting with their ex captain named Prince, Prince Batson. Kept a, kept a meeting in, he was living in Batson Street. And a fellow named Rodolf, used to call him Bats. And this night at the meeting, we have a meeting. He up and say, this is all your stars, you know. You see all you know, all your this fella rather. You see all your stars, this star. Then the next fella jump, a fella named Samuel Peters. And the alias used to call him was Peterburg. He was the flagman for the band. He say, he say we serve, train out all stars. Say train out all stars. Somebody up and say, but when you go to China, you know, sir, people will believe it's a combined. You understand, it's a, 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 tea, a mixing of different. So, the, the Philharmonic coming. Call it a Trinidad or Sars Philharmonic Steel Orchestra. Through the direction and influence of legends like Neville Jules and Jerry Jemmett, then lay the foundations of a musical institution and powerhouse. Under their stewardship, Trinidad All Stars pioneered the playing of classical music on the pan and subsequently captured six music festival titles, playing some of the most difficult pieces by the masters, such as Mozart, Schubert, Handel, Tchaikovsky, and Wagner.
The bomb competition quickly became the domain of Trinidad All-Stars as fans would gather by the thousands downstairs the Garrett on Charlotte Street early Carnival Monday mornings eager to hear what Neville Jules had the players practicing in secret. We're taking up two men at a time because the Garrett is small. Only five men could practice. Sir. You come along to each and you say, Andrew, you come that section. You're all right. Holding our next two again, take care and run everything. But the hardest thing I ever see Jules come across is when we're learning bomb tunes. Now, he's the only steel band in the world. I want to go to quite because I'm in there. We're learning three panorama tunes, um, three, three bomb tunes. And we're upstairs in the garage, Fisher and the brother, and then there's one of them downstairs. Well, that's from when the keys, so, syncopators, and then coming along and listening to get the beating of the tune. They had so many in the band used to play for real hard. So this is Douglas one, Taffy is the next one. So fish and them ball too loud. You see, alright, all you hear there is number one too loud, and you're getting three, three cautions you get. Come back again, you hear a second one too loud. When you hear the too loud, get your bottom dollar, take down your sticks, you know, his fingers. Imagine you learning three bomb tune with your fingers. That ain't no joke. That don't have any steel band in the world. I'd say in the world on this planet could do that. As a matter of fact, when I joined the band, there are three rules. The three rules were we must not be seen by no other band when they're practicing, one. Secondly, we have three classical pieces for Juve Morning. And if by chance you know the name of anyone, don't even tell your mother. They were never disappointed, as Neville and All Stars always produced something special, which was mostly classical pieces played to a calypso beat. They would add other musical scores from movies, especially the likes of The Magnificent Seven and The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, as well as timeless soul ballads and even religious standards, which everyone enjoyed chipping to on the road. made history when they copped the large mass band titles in back-to-back -back years in 2014 and again in 2015.
The band also received the Hummingbird Medal Gold for music at the National Awards in 1982. It's fair to say that the history of Pan and that of Trinidad All-Stars are intertwined and the band led the way by being the first to play the Pan with two sticks, introduce classical music on Pan, as well as introduce the bass bands, which are all integral pieces in any steel orchestra today. 85 years is quite some time and for an organization to last that amount of years, it really speaks of the vision and the awareness of the importance of continuity and seeking to produce uh, leaders after leaders to ensure the, the organization continues to, to grow and expand and to succeed as it is. So 85 years is, has, is a mammoth task for any organization to accomplish, to accomplish and to be standing stronger in this time. So I think this is something great and um, I'm happy to have been a part of this organization because it's history that was made and history in the making. And therefore, being associated with the All Stars is, is, is something that is invaluable to me. And having had experiences with them as well, we a toured, uh, went to England, I performed the, the jewel, I can't recall which one of the jewels, but that year I sang Progress with the Queen's Hall. So I have, a, I have a little history with them, plus I play a little panda. Well, I mean, first of all, congratulations to the Massey Trinidad World Stars. I mean, this is a fantastic milestone that we're upon. And I say we because I feel like we are part of the band. Uh, it's a spectacular accomplishment. And I would think, I would actually say, and I would assert that the Massey Trinidad World Stars is the best steel band organization or steel orchestra organization in Trinidad and Tobago. Not just because of our records, but because of who the band is how well the organization is run, its um, fiscal responsibility, and its values, discipline, dedication, magnificence. This is really, uh, truly lived in the way that the band operates. I began in you know, at a very tender age of 15 years old. And under Mr. Jerry Gemmott, who was the musical, uh, musical director at that time, Orsaz was heavily involved in classical music. So it developed a sense of discipline because as a classical musician you must be disciplined and that discipline transcended the pioneer that discipline groomed me helped to groom my life because all stars the influence of all stars with me is not just in the pioneer it helped to shape me as a person and as a musician it has shaped my life in so many ways, you know, in terms of discipline and um, tolerance to each other, you know, and that determination to never say die, you know. I've grown with that and it has helped me along the way up to until now. And um, I must say that I'm pleased that I made a choice to come to Ulster in 1973. You know, I mean, each band has the unique history that needs to be told. Everybody has their own problems that come along. But I've seen this band grown from strength to strength. Well, one, th one thing about Trinidad you know, All Stars, I think music, it is uh, uh, one of the primary uh, musical organizations and institutions that we have in Trinidad and Tobago and the world at large. Well, when I hear the name Trinidad All Stars, I think about my days as a young man growing up playing Pan and Invaders. All Stars was always a legend. We always thought of them as legends, you know. Um, the great Neville Jules. I remember on the Juve morning, we coming up from Woodbrook, and you all on Charlotte Street there, you know, the days of the bomb, the great days of the bomb. And I, I remember you all played something like Intermezzo was one. Uh, Lieber Strom, which we played, we, both of us had that, so you know, we, we were competing for bragging rights. <laughs> you know, we had Lieber Strom and you and all stars had Lieber Strom. And uh, in a Persian market, I remember that, Tales from Vienna Woods, I remember all those old songs. So the band had a, 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 a knack for producing, for choosing classical music that was adaptable to the pan and to the carnival. 
I remember I had uh, some friends who used to play with you all, and they were telling me about the garret, up in the garret. You have to play with your fingers, and nobody heard the song until the, when they came down from the garden. So all of those memories is what make to me. And the Neville Jules, we always knew in Woodbrook, All Stars was a very disciplined band, noted for their discipline. And Mr. Jules was the person who had instilled that in the band. So I remember, I spoke to him when I went to, to teach in Seattle as a visiting artist. And we used to chat on the phone. And what was interesting, he was All Stars, and Ellie, who I was working with there in the summer, the Invaders. So we were, he would always say what Ellie said was, that was wrong. You see, wait, that was wrong. He said, but I know that is your boy. I said, I'm not the boy. I want the truth. <laughs> what was. So we were discussing the rubber and the sticks. And all this. So we had a, I, I saw him very, very few times in my life. But I always had tremendous respect for him and for the music that he did. And to create a, a legendary organization like this to survive for 85 years and the standard at which it is now, you know, and if you will have your own pocket. This is, it's an amazing achievement. So I think most steel bands would love to know that there could be anything close to Trinidad All Stars. One of the things that came out of this institution is a senior foundation, which we started about 16 months ago. I'm the president and I'm very pleased to say that we have been making a lot of progress so far. We had 12 events out of 16 months and this is our second one that we only be doing together with the peer one body, Massey Trinidad All Stars. Last year we had a joint event here, a Thanksgiving service, and in Thanksgiving and Interfaith service where we provided meals for over 300 persons around the area and one of the homes for the elderly. And this year, we are doing a joint event here, celebrating 85 years through the eyes of Panorama, featuring our own Leon Smooth Edwards. We call it Senior in the Business. Since I joined the Massey Group of Companies back in 2004, I became involved with the Trinidad uh, All Stars. Before Mila Massey, Trinidad All Stars, now Massey Trinidad All Stars. I have uh, been extremely attracted, one, because I love Pan, two, because the people in the organization, the people in the uh, band are just amazing. I think individuals with their dedication and how warm they are and their attitude towards playing, playing the band. And I say that because you know, at Massey, we have certain values that are important when we say we associate our brand with something. So when you talk about honesty and integrity, this is an organization that stands for that. When we talk about uh, our own values of how we treat people and uh, love and care, I see that in the way that members of the band treat you know, everybody in the community around them. When we talk about our uh, um, uh, commitment and our own values to growth and continuous improvement, you see that all the time 
in this band. So it's a really very good fit between the values and what we stand for as an organization and the Trinidad All Stars Steel Orchestra. Now I'll embarrass the, the band leader, um, Nigel, back before he was the band leader, uh, he was the drill master. He, I think he still does drills. But I, I remember coming into the yard and um, people bemoaning his sense of discipline and the way that he would just keep going as a taskmaster, hitting the, hitting the pan, tack, 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 again, tack, 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 again, tack, 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 again. And, um, you know, till wee hours of the morning and, you know, the players would stay there, be involved, tired, and then show up on, on, on show night and, and, uh, and, and performance, I mean, amazing. An another, uh, 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 as I said, Showtime, it reminded me of another one of my favorite experiences. I think one of the first times I actually was in the band on stage when we played Showtime at the final. And we, we, we beat one, we, we, we picked number one. And, um, you know, hard to play one and still win, right? And I remember it was such a magnificent and spectacular performance. The energy in the band was fantastic. I have to tell you, I, 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 I am electrified. I sit here talking and I, I think about it, goosebumps come back on me, just the experience of the, of, of the show that was put on. And it was just tremendous, just tremendous. This, this band is amazing, amazing. Trinidad All Stars has become a perennial powerhouse in the annual Panorama competition. With Kitchener's Rainorama, arranged by Rudy Wells in 1973, the band's first success. What has happened since is the stuff legend is made of, and All Stars never disappoints even when the band doesn't win. Boasting the largest group of loyal supporters both at home and abroad, All Stars music is the most infectious on the pan, as the band boasts 10 Panorama titles to date, the third most in the country. It includes historic pieces like The Timeless Woman on the Bass, unknown band in back-to-back -back years in 1980 and 81, followed by David Rudder's Hammer in 86. Following a lean spell, the band returned with a bang in the 21st century with wins in 2002 playing DeFosto's Firestorm and did it again with another DeFosto composition in 2007, the appropriately named Pan Lamentation.
Then, after a series of second and third place finishes, the band hit the jackpot again in 2011 and 2012 with Showtime and Play Yourself respectively, the latter written and produced by the band's own Clive Telemark. Wins number 9 and 10 came in the 2015 with Unquestionable and 2017 with Full Extreme, a song that was on the lips of almost all of TNT that year. Smooth Edwards arranged nine of the band's ten Panorama successes, in addition to the victory in the International Panorama in 2015 with a reworked Carito Banco. <laughs> to the 10 Panama wins, All-Stars also chalked up 11 second place finishes, tied with Phase 2 for that distinction, and also leads the way with 6 third place finishes to D. The All-Stars Junior Band also added to the legacy with their first Junior Panorama title in 2020, after only a few short years in existence. <laughs>
that feeling was <laughs> out of this world because I know how hard me and my team practiced for it. I know how hard we wanted this from the beginning. It was the major goal. And finally achieving that goal, it just felt, <laughs> yeah, out of this world kind of feeling. <laughs> But this year was a little different because certain songs got a lot of votes and the song that we chose was actually not on the list. It was like night before, um, about a, a Sunday night, we had practice Monday and Kai just sent the song in the chat. And I see everybody in the chat start to get a little fight state and thing and then the next day we decide, you know, let me try it. And when we try it, automatically everybody loved it, so we went with it. And I'm really glad we made that choice. <laughs> I try to impart all my knowledge that I've been here, you know, studying with, with, with you know, experiences with the National School Orchestra, the conductors, you know, um, lectures at UV, whatever they taught me, whatever I know, I, I try to pass it on and hold nothing down. <laughs> Back in 1996, Trinidad All-Stars achieved another first with victory in the pan and mass competition. Bands had to play a different tune at each of the four competition venues and produce costume masqueraders. Trinidad All-Stars played a pop classic medley at Victoria Square, Pan in a Rage at Adam Smith Square, The Power of Music at the Savannah, and the Barber of Seville Overture at South Key. The mass portrayal was fleets in in Hawaii which saw the band claim the TT $100,000 first prize. To our first responders and frontline workers, we wish to say thank you, as we also encourage all of TNT to wear a mask in public, wash your hands frequently, and practice social distancing as we battle the COVID-19 together. A message from Massey Trinidad All-Stars Steel Orchestra. The arranger for the band is Leon Smooth Edwards. Band number 16, Massey Trinidad All Stars. He is not easily recognized and he likes it so. However, his music is a totally different story. I speak of none other than Leon Smooth Edwards. Leon Smooth Edwards started to arrange in 1976. So he's speaking about 44 years now, so he's certainly one of the seniors in the business, even though that he was away for 10 years, right? But um, he's one of the, the only arrangers, I would say, in Trinidad and Tobago, senior arrangers that won 10 Panorama by himself, nine national and one international, although some people don't like to mention the international, mm -hmm. but to me, international is always greater than national, you know, but that we'll discuss on the next, <laughs> next time. <laughs> Well, to start with, I um, did. I started doing the band out of a sense of need. Mm -hmm. There was no one. The guy who was there before me, Rudy Wells, he went back to college, and you know, the band was was in a shamble, you know. And the captain at the time, Webb, said, "All right, we will get." Um, the youths, the, who used to be there with, with him during the day, who took the tune, like the section leaders, mm -hmm. and who would distribute the tune in the night. So it looked like all you had to do the tune, you know. So that year we started with about four of us, you know. Um, of course, I was doing the majority of work, but to the point that I end up telling the guys after a while, listen, if somebody else don't do a solo, I stop in here, you know. I don't want to just go and arrange a tune amongst people like Bradley and Earl Rodney, 
Ray Hallman, people who are in Panorama already, you know, I figure. So I say, I don't want to take the blame. Or let's take the blame with me, you know, let's do it together, right? And um, I insisted, and uh, uh, Tony Guy ended up taking over at Panapan, and he learned a solo. And he brought it in the, into, the, into the song. All right? Um, the judges, because of, well, of course, didn't want to take all the licks by myself. The four of us name were on the thing, the four section leaders. <laughs> right. And that was a catalyst for the, one of the judges to say, the tune was disjointed. But over the years, I listened back to that tune. And up to now, I cannot tell where Tony's solo started and where it ended. So for that judge to say it was just jointed, he just made that as assumption by seeing four names on a banner. All right? It wasn't so. Nevertheless, of course, Jemot, Jerry Jemot, our musical director, in, a, in order to avoid that, he said, all right, you alone will do the tune this year. Nobody else doing a solo. Next year, somebody else will do it, and so on. But after I did it the first year, uh, that, the next year, everybody in mind was made up. I am the guy doing it, you know? 79 was basically the first time I listened to another band, Symphony in G. That year, Renegade Despers played the same tune as us. And I listened to their version, their preliminary version, because we had a boycott that year. From that time, I say, I could be that fella. I knew I could have beat badly from that time, right? And well, the next year was history, right? We won 80, we won 81. And we were in the first three up to 86, because we won again in 86. And um, 87, I went down to Pantrin Bego for the score. This was the Friday, you know, the semi semifinal Tuesday. So Friday after lunch, I went down and Pekong, you know, all the field, all the winning, all the winning this year, I think. I said, well, we're the only band in the first three for the whole of the 80s. They said, eh, all in the welcome of the first three. <laughs> we went to carry the banker to put this forth, right, you know, so that's, you know, it, it makes you wonder. After making a statement like that, the band came forth. My favorite Panama song from All Stars is Cory Tabanka. You can jump high, you can jump the Cory Tabanka. I didn't know how they did not win that night. That arrangement was well executed. It had every single thing in it. It was great. As a matter of fact, to me, it was genius. And I remember the road matches, but Cory Tabanka has stayed with me as All Stars to me. Best panorama arrangement. Best. I have, I still remember that. I, I remember when they shipped in from the pan into the rhythm section with the tassa. My goodness, wow. I mean, it was amazing. The, the Savannah was an opera. So most people like myself were disappointed. Those days, Dave Elcock used to be at one station, Phil Simmons on the next station. So Saturday mornings, everybody switching channels, listening to the what tunes are the pick? I hear tum 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 and I love it. It's a nice tune. All of a sudden, when the intro finished, Trini voice. And I remember saying, oh boy, the man spoiled the tune, and I said, no channel. <laughs> <laughs> right? 
Later on in the season, somebody say, when I was about to pick a guy running the panel, he says, move to pick it, I was just in a little party or some little function. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear a, a tune, he had a plate, I said, what tune is that? He said, I said, no, I hear a curry tape and He said, no, you ain't yet on pan. He said, you know, I will thing here. He, he kind of convinced me, I said, all right. Halfway paying down the tune. I started shaking my head, I said, well, this tune is trouble. Yeah, and that, that was, you know, when a song on the band is nothing like 20 voice. <laughs> 20, I don't mean to um, pong it. <laughs> I just mean. <laughs> Smudo really do, Smudo do minor and stuff like that. Because he always figure that solar mood, I not putting you in a zone. I'm not, I don't have to put you in a zone because totally that, that, that is not his his way, you know, that, that, that's his vibe. You know what I mean? I keeping you up there. But I will give you some parts for you to think of. Yeah, yeah, he, he had that. Um, the, plenty of the Foster songs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Firestorm. Firestorm had that, that, that sense of, 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 of um, major minor. Mm -hmm. You understand? So it's already there. But with that minor, that, that kind of minor f feel, he not sticking, he not going up. Uh, he's he going up. Staying in a, in a major happy, happy mood. You know what I mean? Corita Banka. Yeah, I could Corita Banka, man. I go say, well, yeah, Corita Banka, I go put in a Miami because of Oriental kind of. No, 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 no. no. I go say, Corita Banka, I done get a banka ready. Yeah, we're going on the side. we gone, we done. And I'm going to enjoy myself. <laughs> yes, I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm bring some tassa, tassa and thing and thing and thing. And if all you figure, well, it's, 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 if we go drink some rum or we go. Wherever, that's how we going down. Before the records came out, we would go around with a tape recorder to catch Aunt Sparrow and they would sing their favorite songs first. So that they find all before Christmas, all stars used to finish the Panama tune. All like 77 and 76 something. That's how we did it. Right? Then I, I took over from Aunt, um, right?
I also noticed that bands played my arrangement. And I said, okay. So if I, I arrange it from one band, but you're hearing your tune played, you know? Because you know, in those days, the electric was proud of you. So you're hearing your same tune by another band with identical arrangement and thing. And I, I say, okay. And from that time, I started doing tune last. Also, I used to be the last band to do tune. I changed it. So you find um, the week before prelims, that is when I also started the tune. And I, by that time, knew I could have uh, do a minute of music a day. Right? So that's how it started. And of course, when everybody else finished the tune, sometime between when I start and think some other, another new tune came out or whatever. Or um, after Woman on the Bass in 80. Well, Woman on the Bass was the breakthrough for, for Pan Cheng. Because before Woman on the Bass, most of the bands either Kitsch or Sparrow. Because when any other band try a tune besides Kitsch and Sparrow, they never win. Right? All the um, Shazandos where I come out to play and all them kind of thing, kick up dust for lives that final night, everybody be them, you know, this kind of way. So we definitely didn't want to choose besides Sketch or Sparrow. But after Woman and the Beast, as a matter of fact, a band play Krapo something the next year. <laughs> In 79, we were down St. Lindsay Street in the industrial area. We came up now to the residential area up here in 1980. So a whole set of Southeast students, a whole set of Belmont intermediates, youths like soap seed, right? And they love women on the base and they're prancing and they're kind of they're sweating. I remember stopping the band on two occasions. I said, all right, folks, we know that is a, this is a party tune. We're having another party. This one is not in the the selection. You're choosing a Panama tune from the other. But like them youths, it went over the head. <laughs> right? So when we eliminate a lot of tunes, I said I'm gonna count four now and we will play the Panama tune. That is how they will be choosing, right? Mm -hmm. So we had about two or three tunes to choose from. I just say bang 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 yeah, yeah. Grrr, a little grumble because some of the older guys understood what I said and they start something besides the Roman and the bass. But at the end of the little rumble, yeah, yeah, woman on the base will be able and people kind of carry on. And I remember saying to myself, me and my big mouth, why didn't continue choosing a tune like that? So woman on the base was chosen by the band because I gave them authority to choose. Although I tried to dissuade them, the youths, and I believe it's the youths, because the band was full with youths I guess.
Then, despite his success as an arranger, Smoot took a decision that puzzled many at the time in 1988, despite winning the arranger of the 80s decade. So I didn't do any tune in 89. 80, my tune, last tune was, um, not um, Panini Rukunko Tunko. It wasn't until 10 years later that one morning I got up and next to me was my wife, dry and I wet as though somebody threw a bucket of water in me. And all I could remember, if you don't use it, you will lose it. I said, what kind of dream is this, boy? What kind of... She dry, dry, dry and I wet soaking and all I remember, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. I started pondering why this thing happened. And then suddenly I realized mm, it's time to go back to it. time to go and do a Panama tree. a young man, the panorama bug bit and he made a return, which surprised many in pretty much the same way his decision to leave did 10 years earlier. It begs the question therefore, is he a better arranger after or before the break? I, I think so. I was more spiritual. Um, I used to pray now before I um, do any music. You know? Because um, Going through, being safe for 10 years, going to church every Sunday and so on. I got to realize God is everything. Without God, we could do nothing. And using that as a backdrop, I would pray before. Even to today, I go in the room with those guys. I don't know what I'm going to do. Before I pray, I know, I say, Lord, yeah, my show me, you know, have a week. When I started to pray, just giving people song, you know. And so I think the tune may be more spiritually based in the sense that I'm not doing it in my own strength, you know. I give him all the praise and the credit and the kudos. You know, I listened to Showtime this week. Showtime ranking high up there with them, you know. Showtime. Um, or curry. Um, you know, strange enough, we played so many different tunes better than women on the bass. And it's because of the woman loving women on the bass <laughs> that, you know, women can mesmerize men. That has 
has something about the woman in the business. But I'm talking about, we, to me, we did tunes that were much more, you know, if you want to use the term, a higher standard. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like dust in your face. Yeah, of course, well, don't talk about dust in your face. <laughs> people say they want more. Yeah. And that wasn't me, eh? Qualys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Qualys under All Stars Men, you know, those guys who say, hey, Smoke used to do uh, You know, Smoke used to listen to uh, So All Stars, All Stars tape and thing, you know, to get the. To be yeah, the All Stars vibe and thing. And plus, one guy who used to be. Are wrong with me. The same guy I told you um, in the 80s, I tell him playing mm -hmm. a solo. He came back that year because he left at me. When I left, there was five of us resigned or six of us. He came back that year and, well, you know, what Smith used to do. And he sort of, he helped Collins to make some changes and some idioms and so on. And to the point people are saying, but like Smooth come back. <laughs> you know? And the crowd say, that, that's the first time, I think the only time you hear a band say, we want more, we want more. Impact. We would have played this again, but we had to go off stage because I think phase two was the band coming after us, if I remember clearly. But that's in your face, that the journey with that's in your face was, was, was something else too. Anthony Guy played a major role in getting Eddie to understand what all stars does to the crowd for Panama, because that's when you say, well, the popular tune at the time was when our grant, I think, was shut call. And you see, we could bring in that. How we doing that is, see, let's try it. We do it and we realize well, all right. We wouldn't let them hear the shot in Panama, but we do it in Savannah on stage. Yeah. And that created a great impact on the stage, and I think. All night we can ride got the arm, the arm. Go down in the yard in the day, and I have some of the crack shots, Terry Mark and Sule and them guys. Get them, I get it, you know, so that in the night time, when they, when the whole band is there, they play what I give them, the bass man, and then I just do the harmonizing, like the double tenor, the, 
the other bands in the middle, you know, because um, to do that in front of the band, it, it's too many distractions. People walking about, talking, screaming up their face. They want to hear final night music in the first note you play with. You just got to get rid of them, you know, you're going a private thing in the, in the room with some people and it, right, you have it, right, at this state and you go down and right, it's get the basement, something they come So I would work with the top on the bottom, a tenor man and a bass man, and uh, we even have a fella playing a little drums there, and so on, and get the, get the frame and the right mood, and then play the night and thing. I as a youth, might ask, well, what is wrong? What do you think? Because I get taken the music. I had to catch it while they come in. Eh? Yeah, I like got cross buns. Yeah, I had a guide. Go sell out. So he, you know, he said, you get that? So he had to keep it because he might do something and then he gone. He gone somewhere else. And then he come back and tell you, ah, which is a hard day just now. I say, I still have it. You know that kind of way. So that was he kind of unpredictable. He said, yes, yeah, yeah, I wonder. But then he started adding it. He might ask, well, what do you think? What do you think that feeling? So I, I know, might say, uh, smooth. If you're doing a chromatic, you know, go a little more, now. well, and go a little more. And then you go on, but you tell you, when you say go, you go in a little more. When you think, well, a little more, he going to tongue. When he reach, he already reach in the North Star. What I love about smooth music is that um, smooth arrange almost like, if you think of in terms of Calypsonian with like tempo, or a Ramage. You meet a band, you walk with your pan, you say, come and take a jam and we just get into it, or extempo, you pull out a topic and you sing it. Because Smooth, you know, is a strange arranger, you know. He has so much of talent. I don't think people realize how talented Smooth is. Well, at least they realize that because his records pick for itself. You know, the most top three in, in the history of Panorama, the only person that win 10 large band Panorama. And then, um, Smooth would come from work, he would come into the pan yard and we sit down in line for about two hours. Sometimes he'd play a little card, a little homie, or then hang out. And just see, he said, let's go in the room now, guys. He didn't come with anything planned. And he started to work, and I did somebody play, keeping a little bit of him, and he just started, and that is. And that's how we build our song from, you know, from over the years. It's, I think it's something magical. Um, seeing, just being in the room and seeing the process of how he works and what it is happens. Um, it is something that transcends just... I've seen other musicians work, arrange and stuff. And how smooth does it? It's so effortless. It's so effortless. You see, you, 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 could, you, you see that experience and that knowledge that he has just comes to play. Personal smooth. Playing next to him, close to him, even before he started arranging. Smooth always had a particular, how to describe genius. Because we'd be playing, and he playing a double tenor. And sometimes just so, we'll just do something a little different, and one of the other guys might just watch him and smile, you know? Do something just a little, enhance what, whatever they're doing. And quiet, quiet, sometimes Uncle Jensen, somebody just soloed it. Smooth music is a music patented for all stars. You have to be a real old star to play smooth music. You know what I mean? And it's easier for you when you grow up, grow up playing music with smooth and playing his music. I see many a good pan men come to play all stars and have to run. You know what I mean? And, and smooth man is a man, right? Especially now. Smooth man don't work alone. Smooth man don't work without God. There's something about the music that represents community. You know, when you listen to the vibe and the groove and what goes into the music, it's, it's a perfect musical example of what Trinidad All Stars represents. And I really like that about it, you know? And, and Smooth has a specific style and a specific touch that is then represented so well by Trinidad Altas members and players, you know, that relationship has been built and has stood strong for so many years that that bond is a relationship in itself, right? That bond is a marriage in itself. So being a part of Trinidad Altas and performing 
with other members of the band, performing with friends, performing with people who you consider family, performing even though you may not know everybody, you still feel as though you're connected to them in some way and that connection is the music. Smooth has a, a way that he touches the layman with music, the man in the street. You know, some, you listen to some people's music and you know you sit down and you tap your feet and you nod your head. But you see the, the man in the street, smooth music touches his soul. Well, and I think that is, that is why it's so relatable to the people, majority of the people, right? Um, when you hear smooth rendition, it must have a sweet part that you're just waiting to, to hear that they just had a wine. You know, it has certain songs that it really structured musically where you're getting plenty plenty of music that, you know, you could tell that the person went to, went to um, like one of them music schools and, and learn the shock there. Likewise it's smooth, but smooth is getting people something, getting people exactly what they want to hear. I have a bit the opinion, if my band is playing and people sit down like if they're in so I feel, I feel, I want when I start playing, people get off out of the seat. Right? And the music is arranged in that, ma in that manner. And to get, uh, to, get, to get that sort of thing, you gotta sing cool. Because we are very syncopated. You don't, you don't walk like if you're marching. You don't, you don't dance like if you're marching. You dance. And I syncopation. And my music is made for dancing. Because, number one, feels very disheartened. If my band playing and everybody saying no, oh man going to get a drink. Right. I feel people must be here, yeah, then moving until we don't finish. Until we finish. You know? And to get that element, you sometimes you play something, and you say, nah, that song is too tame. You must spruce it up, you know. And with the objective in mind is to nobody must be sitting when I starts playing. Time. Things with the music that I don't know. He, he have a certain formula he does use in his music. It, it is tell a story. You don't really get well. I don't really get lost in the music. I understand everything he does, but I just still get lost in the music. You know, when I get into the music, but not lost as I don't know where I am. Um, you just have to look at some of the the names of the songs that the band play, and it, it really um gives a good description of what the band means. Showtime, it's showtime. You know, excitement, bounce and drive, you know, firestorm. Those are all the elements the band bring when we go on stage and that's what the, 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 the fans expect, you know, and that is what Trinidad also has never failed to bring 100%. We're doing Sokma Sukunia and we're doing a part. I mean, we're Nice and it going down, boy. Vibes, vibes going down. And a guy those days, we didn't used to be all the way down at the back where we rehearse now, mm -hmm. right in the front of the panel, close to the road. The bases and them close to the road. And a guy came, we always at the, the, the morning, 
And the man gain on in that part, boy. And he just, he started to gain on thing and he wrong the bases and thing and whatever, 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 whatever. All of a sudden, Smooth has say, hey, Ole, come, come, come. Call a couple of the guys with the, the, the short end. And we do. Because the man start to move a certain way, he add more so the person could get more frantic than that kind of way. And to be honest with you, the same, I, that's how I felt. The same way he idolized, how that man, you know, that is what he, he, he idolized in the savannah. And the exact thing happened, especially in the drag. And I would say the music has a lot to do with our performance because if we, we weren't touched the way that we were from his music, I don't think we could give our all and our energy like that because I would say, it, I will sound bias, also as is the best performing man I know. We we would put our all, especially on a final night. It's like we are a different man on a final night. Is is the it just has a life of its own. The music has a life of its own, and it has a way of of getting everybody into it. So depending on how we feel, he he would be able to know. Okay, yes, this is it. This is it. And it takes us a while sometimes for the, for the music to sink in, especially if it is, he comes and he, he does a last minute change. We have to then learn it and, and soak it in. And we have to get that, that feeling where, where it comes natural. Over the years we set a standard and the band itself come to expect that. They know tonight we're coming for war. You know, because as I tell them all the time, I say, you see, like, if we're trying to encourage them, if we get to claim low in the prelims or the early set, say, don't worry about that. You don't win Panama prelims. It's one, you know, so they have their mentality. It's final night. You win Panama. And they come with that exp as though they're put on the winning <laughs> persona or whatever. And that'll be trouble. I think we get up from number 19. I think we just in the and ended up third. Ended up to it, I just felt that probably the judges felt where well, we come from too far. <laughs> they say, well, we won the panorama. And as a matter of fact, the past two years, I think we did extremely well on our final night. But you know, we abide by the judges' decision. He is undoubtedly one of the best arrangers in Trinidad and Tobago. And I dare say worldwide. Leon Smith was it's not just a Panama Ranger. Because he did so many other music for all stars from my time as a youth. He, he was not even the Panama Ranger at the time I joined the band. He did stage side music. But when he came on the Panama scene, I always tell people, Smooth has this talent for music that you cannot pass in front of the Panyard and all stars playing a tune and you not move. The music doesn't move you. Smooth knows how to touch something in you through music. He has that talent. And I always say, as long as Smooth is in a Panama finals, he could be last in the semifinals. Do not write him off until the finals is over. Because he has the ability to rise to the top in that final night performance.
really pants, and that's an important thing. I think all stars, at the risk of upsetting some people, I think it's the finest playing band, you know? The players, to me, seem to have been taught properly how to strike the pan. I learned that in Envy, from Ellie. Not in, a, in, in any organized way, but I was a little boy and he tuned in his pan after working evening because he was not a full-time tuner. And he would teach me how to strike the drum and show me beyond a certain point all you get in the distortion. So I, had, I look at the old stars and I tell bands who I have arranged for and people in general, you know, I say, look at how, if you look at them play, look at the television shots. The hands are not coming like this. The, the old stars bass players are not like this. Yeah. It's actually pan and, and, and the tenor pan and second. They're playing like this, so they're, 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 their hands are very, very close to the drum. So you get the best sound out of the drum. So I think that is a, I'm playing them a great tribute there. They're the finest playing band. Men who grew up in my, that era, but especially what the basement and then. And the hand, the hand never raised, the hand don't raise, you know what I mean? These are things we learn. The higher you raise the hand, the longer you take to get to the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Especially in classical music. People played, as I said, mainly for the fun of playing and for the passion to say we had a better tune we have the best <laughs> for bragging rights then you know that's what it was like and ellie whom i had ad admired so much that man was you know his life was kind of like clockwork ellie manet was he was employed with the foundry and he had to fashion the instruments and so on the tools and so on and you could tell when it was 4:15. You would hear that tick tick, you know, call it tick, three speed bicycle. In those days, they say tick tick. Mm -hmm. So you would see that tick tick bicycle pulling into Invader's yard. And he would come and he would go into the house, you know. And then after a few minutes, maybe like about 10, 15 minutes, he would be back, be back now, starting to tune. So from one job to another. But I, I think the tuning was, he didn't do it as a job. I think it was uh, the pleasure of creating a beautiful song, you know. And uh, if I may go back a bit, when All Stars played Liebestrom, and we played Liebestrom, we had a record of it, it was a fine record, you know. I still play it. Yes, you know. But hearing it, when we heard All Stars, Jules took his version from a, 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 a jazz sax player who had recorded it, so he got a lot of the licks from that, put it in the pan. It was a fine arrangement. But when you heard the band, because of the fact that Ellie had just created the double second, when you heard Invaders playing the tune, it just sounded, the instruments made such a big difference. And that is what he was after.
think the goal for any performer is to have that connection with your, with your fans, with your supporters. And the band could not have done it without them. We would not have been recognized or as recognized as we are now without that. It's a, it, it's a two-part process, it's, you know, it's each, 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 uh, uh, the, the fans and the, and the organization. The music that we put out there, we have greatly appreciate that they appreciate it. And for some people, it, it, I, I've seen people just go crazy wild over the music. And, you know, I mean, it, it, to the point where sometimes I walk, I'm walking down the road and something, and people don't know my name, they'll call All Stars. Get us out, so get us out. It, it, it reached that point, and, and I just have to say thank you because wherever we go, I think the, the, the expectation is there. And the expectation is there because we have been doing it. I went to Palace Beautiful, I think it was either one or two. It was either Jean Pierre or Hazley Crawford Stadium. And the only expression I could give is how I felt when I heard that tune being played, Woman on the Bass. For me, it was the first and only time I felt I could take off all my clothes. That music was so intoxicating. I felt that I just wanted to strip, strip of everything I had on. And it was like, wow. I started following All Stars from that time to now. For me, All Stars is about excitement. All Stars is about happiness. It's a certain joy that I can't explain to people. I love Pan, I love Pan per se. But something about Trinidad All Stars music has captivated me over the years, and even when I didn't know anybody in this band, I remember years ago, it's more than 20 years, writing an, a letter to somebody in All Stars because I didn't know who was the manager. All I know, I just love this band music. And I wrote a letter saying I'm from South, and I just love the music that this band produces every year. And I just love the way they make me feel. We are more suppo supporters that some people <laughs> Imagine all over the world. So you walk, I will go New York and hey, all stars. I just saying, I have an all stars t shirt, but somebody recognized me. Mm. And it happened to me already where I own Flatbush, not wearing an all stars t shirt. And a, a, a guy just called out to me, Bad man, all stars. I said, Yeah, man, we're happening, we're happening. But when he started to talk to me, he's from Trinidadian, he's from Grenada. Mm. But you yeah, are wrong. He said, boy, asking me again for Nalo or you know, mm. asking for the guys and he asking for guys by name. So I said, but wait now, boy, but more people know me than and he's not from Trinidad, you know. And it's an honor. It's a, it's a, I think I think it was an honor, you know. <laughs> There's so many to choose from that it begs the question, what is your favorite panorama selection? I go in with Woman on the Beast. Woman on the Beast. If you want to follow that, it's unknown band. Those two tunes, you listen to them two tunes carefully. Yeah, no, man, you have music for days, you know. It's for days you have music. Unknown band. I love unknown band bad. Unknown band for me. Unknown band have a spirit, as I told, smooth man and say I don't know 
for what you did in 81, but boy, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Unknown band is, wow. They could say what they want, unknown band is it. My favorite Panorama selection is unknown band. Unknown band, honestly, um, it just has a different feel, personally, to me. The unknown band. I would say one of my favorite is unknown band. My favorite power tune is Unknown Band. That is my, that is my favorite part. I would say, the music in that, the, ne the nearest music to me come after, after that is Kavita Banka. But with all DJ, my favorite is Unknown Band. I love Unknown Band. I love me and my lady. I love Soka Warriors. There's so many, to me, like, every year, all stars keep getting better and better. You know, we, we have people talk about women on the bass and, and, and Carita Bank and blah, blah, blah. That's kind of my favorite tune, favorite uniform, everything. Sukiya by Crazy. But the tune that sits well with me, it didn't win Panama. We came second, two band style. Then he gets on Desperados and beat us by half a point. Sakme Sukuya. Sakme Sukuya and Unquestionable, those two Panama tunes, to me, should never end. Should never end. Just each part coming after the other, just sweeter. You don't, you don't feel like you should finish playing this tune.
favorite panorama piece, which is curry tabanka. I still have not gotten over that introduction. Every time I hear it, my goosebumps, I still get up all over. When we're going to do the intro, because everybody wants to know what's mood going to do with this intro. Corita Banka, we again, thank God for that. I in the room. Study intro. See, hmm, this trouble, boy. So, yeah, that's how we starting. Right? Ting, 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 ting. Right. Yeah. Shorty. Yeah. Tassa. You know? We did. Anyway, we do and we going out now to get away we had to get. Trying to push the door at car open. A whole set of men on the, on the door. So. <laughs> I hear this. <laughs> boy, what are you doing inside of the front? We're trying to push. Men Marco in. When smooth. Put down the first couple bars. Give or take a little four or eight bars. Pam pa ba dam pa dam dam ting tum ting tum ting tum ting 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 That's for the first time in the grandstand. I was not a member, but I was like, I have to be part of that band. So that would have been Firestorm 2002. The one that comes to mind immediately is Soka Warriors in 2006. For me, it would be Showtime. Showtime, that, that year, that entire panorama season, is like we had a hunger because our last win, I believe, was 2007 and so before that so it's like we had this hunger that we had to win so it's like everybody was on point for me it would be soca warriors soca warriors embodied everything you expected from a piece along with the patriotism my favorite song hands down Trinidad all stars is rain melody um not only because it's the first song um I, I practiced with the band in 2001 when I joined, but every time I listen to it, you know, I always have to stop and listen because it's so magical, you know. The way it was put together, there has a classical element. The band was so clean and precise.
ulcers is just for me the best thing that ever happened to pack and it's one of the better things that happened in my life. I am happy to be associated with all stars. Not 85 years because I'm still a teenager, about 25. But I just love all stars music. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. And Smooth Edwards, you are for me one of the best arrangers in Pan world. Thank you for the music. From then till now. And 85 years is no joke achievement. That is a real... People must stand up and take a bow, especially the people who went before. Could only be proud now if there's a place you could stand up and look back. If there's such a place, people that have gone before us, who were the seniors, the, the, the toilers, could now stand up wherever they are and look back and say, a job well done. Continue to go, continue to grow. Congratulations to each and every person, whether they be here still or not, for being part of the, being part of the whole process of making this great organization reach this milestone that we are right now. And I hope that I'll be able to live a little longer to see it further, get further than that, and that those who are behind me will continue to make it even greater and that for this organization to continue prospering for many many more years. I pay tribute to all the leaders who played their part in keeping this organization together for 85 years and as far as I see with the introduction of the Youth Steel Orchestra now I am seeing another 85 years on the horizon. All Stars is a part of me. You cannot discuss my life and who I am without discussing Trinidad All-Stars and for the opportunity that I have had to be a part of it and to experience, to play and to work with the, the music of Leon Smooth Edwards and others, opportunity of a lifetime. Thank you All-Stars. Love you. We have some youths here. I am pretty sure in the next 10 years, 15 years, will be the arranger so many are steel bands out. All stars are structured in a, such a way. Every time we hand over, like it just gets sweeter and better. And I think that adds to all stars success, you know what I mean? The seriousness and the way people pass on the baton. Pass on the baton with all the rules and regulations and, and the way we operate. And I am very proud to be a, a, a associated with a band. Happy birthday, all stars 85 years. More important than all of the accolades and the trophies that we find ourselves um, among is the fact that this organization has not survived, I would say thrived. And it's really one of the outstanding steel orchestra organizations. And I believe the longest standing at 85 years. So congratulations to all of us. <laughs> Uh, congratulations on uh, a milestone well deserved and I would say you know here at 85 years the band is stronger than it ever was it has a more promising future in front of it it is in no way in any form of uh, 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 financial concern or leadership concern this is extremely well led and extremely well participated in band Trinidad All Stars I thank God for you. And from the bottom of my heart, this is Nigel Williams, the captain, and all his management play people and all the players of the band. Congratulations on 85 years, which is a milestone in any steel band's life. Congratulations, and may you continue to grow from strength to strength. Congratulations to Trinidad All Stars. I mean, 85 years is a huge accomplishment because, I mean, we're talking about the start of Steel Pan. You know, um, knowing that Trinidad All Stars as an organization, as a steel band, as an institution has been existing pretty much throughout the history of Steel Pan, throughout the development of the national instrument. So to reach 85 years, it's a, it's a huge accomplishment. And I'm very proud to be part of such a community, of such an institution that represents that. You know, so it's, it's not that we're just part of this, the Steel Orchestra, but we're part of a journey that has been deeply rooted 
in the culture of Trinidad and Tobago, and I think that is what is significant about this 85 years. So I came in and made the bell, and um, there was a captain by the name of Mr. Prince Batson. I think he was one of the guys, or always the person that responsible for the bell. For the bell, he was um, uh, a wish, a guy as well too. And, you know, so it have some spiritual values to this bell, which I wouldn't be able to explain all because I come and meet it in the barn, you know. But I always try to figure out why this bell when I was a young guy you now joined the band, you know. And nobody could have seemed to give me the, 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 the answer that I was looking for until um, I was a little more mature and could have speak to some of the older guys and try to get to the bottom of it, you know. And then I realized, you know. And when the bell burst before we leave St. Junction Street, and I see how people was, you know, like, like if one of your parents has died then. That is how the urgency it was to get back that bell. Everybody was so worried about the bell. People didn't think, care about the practice that night. Everybody was the bell. How you let's bell back, let's get the bell back together and all that, you know? And some of the senior members I'm speaking about was yeah, you know, like that. So then I realized that this bell it means more, you know, than a lot of us will probably realize, you know. Well the bell is, is something that we use to we use it even during rehearsals. And we basically, well, I wouldn't say train the members, but the members know when they hear this bell, bam, stop whatever you're doing and give us full attention. And it's a little orderly way of getting your band together as opposed to taking a, a drumstick or an iron beater and bang, 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 against the thing and da 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 da. To me, that sounds so primitive. A bell is sort of elegant. Bang. Ping, 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 journey into our musical archives. It's hard to believe that we've only just begun to scratch the surface, Ruskin. That's right, Stacey, and so much great music and some amazing memories between 1935 and 2020. And as usual with Trinidad All Stars, there's only one way to leave the stage. Mm -hmm. 